All right, what's up? So we got that Yamar engine, we got it all apart. We need to take a look at the pistons, the sleeves, and see what the engine damage is, see if we can get it fixed, see what the deal is. Let's get into it. Huh, they're not broken, they're not stuck. Hold on. Broken, look at that, right there, broken. Broken, broken, broken. It's broken there too? Broken, right there, broken rings. All right, let's see, this one's pretty broken. I'm gonna set this on the bench, let's see this one. Broken, right here. Oh, that's not a ring, is it? That's the piston, the piston's shattered. The piston is shattered. So the rings are good shape, the pistons are broken. Huh, well that just got a lot more expensive, didn't it? There it is, boys and girls, broken pistons. So you can see that chunk goes right there. We got another crack right there. And then we got another crack forming right there. So there's all kinds of grit under these rings. Who would have thought the pistons were broken? I thought the rings were broken. Uh, that just got a whole lot more expensive. I think the cylinders, the sleeves might have survived. I need to check that out. Man, these pistons are destroyed. I don't know what happened to them. My theory is someone got in here with the starter fluid, the thing wouldn't start, they got desperate and they sprayed it and sprayed it, sprayed it. And you're not supposed to use that stuff on diesel engines because the high compression and just, just blew it up. That's my theory. So it was probably already low on compression. They got the starter fluid, thing wouldn't start and you know, send it to its grave. All right guys, so the sleeves didn't survive either. So you can see here's the front right here. This is the worst one where that uh, chunk came out of the piston. And it's got that big old nasty spot right there. It's got horizontal lines in it. It's got a ring around it. It's got vertical lines up and down it. So we're gonna have to replace this sleeve. And this one looks much better, but it doesn't matter because we're gonna replace them in pairs and we're gonna pull both of these sleeves out. So I'm not exactly sure what happened. It looks like when they use the ether, you know, the starting fluid in there, when it blew it up, the little piece of piston broke off and bounced around in there and scratched up the cylinder liner. So it doesn't look like we're gonna be able to save those and reuse those either. You know, the scratch is really deep. We can't just hone it out, unfortunately. We're gonna have to get new ones. Let's get these old engine sleeves out. All right guys, so the polar worked amazingly well, but you can see we got a mess to clean up and there's all kinds of rust and gunk and chunks of I don't know what in here. So this is why I say guys, always, always, always take your stuff completely apart as far as you can when you're fixing it because you never know what you're gonna find. You can see the size of some of this gunk and what is that, it's like a flake. I hope it's, it's like a flake of something, but there's all kinds of stuff in here. And there's the inlet slash outlet tube for the radiator. It would have sucked all this stuff through the radiator and water pump and just destroyed everything. So I'm glad we're doing this. Let's look at one of these sleeves and see how it turned out. All right, guys, so you can see this sleeve is really nasty. There's supposed to be two O-rings that seal right in the middle of the screen there. And uh, they're stuck in the block. So let's get this block cleaned up. Ooh, man, that is nasty. Look at all that rust in there. Ooh. We're gonna have to get this cleaned up. All right guys, so here's the block. I got it sanded smooth. You can see uh, it's nice and shiny and clean. There's like no warpage at all really, like two thousandths of an inch or whatever. But you can see all this stuff in here and basically the rust is gone. And I'll show you, I've just been painting rust reformer down in here to cure the rust. So let's check out that phosphoric acid. It's concrete metal prep. I just been brushing it on the inside there and it converted all of that rust, all of it, except for the big flakes, it converted it to, you know, what you saw there. So it worked great. Don't get this on any machine parts. It'll really mess them up. Let's get these piston rings on.
piston ring pliers did the trick, man. I got those thick diesel rings on there, easy peasy. Man, those thick diesel rings are not easy to put on. You'll break them easy if you just twist them a little bit. So these are wet sleeves. They have O-rings that seal around the bottom um, to keep the coolant from getting inside the engine and the combustion chamber. So, you know, we got to make sure we replace those too. All right, so we got all these rubber O-rings here and they go down in this groove. There's two per side. So there's two here and two there, four total. And they go down in that groove down in there. So I'm going to coat them in some Vaseline and get these liners stuck back in here. these new engine liner sleeves installed. All right, so on this tractor, these numbers were uh, lined up like this. So that's how it's going back. It's smooth on the other side. So this is how these caps fit together. And um, this was facing the exhaust side. That's how we're going to put it back. Assembly lube on the bearing surfaces here. And then I'm going to try my best to stagger these rings as we push it in. And then we're going to have to torque these to spec. So anytime I repair this old stuff and rebuild it, it's really important for me to note how it came apart. I like to put it back together how it came apart, just not broken. So, you know, put the rod caps back in the same location, put the bolts back exactly where they were. You know, it's been like that for 40 years. Why change it? Just replace the broken stuff. Here's the orientation of these new rings, silver one on top. Then it's got the black one. Then it's got this stepped one. It's got that stepped edge in it. And then you got your oil expander ring. And you can see that's the tightest part of the oil coil there um, of the little spring thing on the bottom ring there. If you look on the other side, it's expanded you see in between the cracks. So I have it uh, like that. So the tightest part's there and the expanded one's there. Crankshaft's in great shape. I've been getting in here polishing it up with a little bit of really fine grit sandpaper, you know, like a thousand grit to make sure that there's no little nicks and stuff that you can feel with a fingernail on the crankshaft. That way the new crankshaft bearings will glide on it freely and we won't have any problems. Let's go ahead and get these new pistons installed. Shouldn't be too bad. We just gotta push them down in there and get them seated and get them bolted in. So the engine's running great now, our piston rings worked. I don't do compression tests on these engines after I rebuild them, especially this one. It didn't matter because the diesel engine rings are so thick, it takes a while for them to seat. So if you do a compression test, it'll just be low and it'll just confuse you. So, you know, you gotta break in the engine for the compression test to be accurate. But other than that, this thing is running awesome. Don't use starter fluid on diesel tracker engines, please. Check you on the next one, later.